So you want to buy a slow cooker. Maybe you have fantasies of coming home to a hot dinner already bubbling and making the house smell delicious. But how do you choose the right one? And how much do you need to spend? We tested eight models priced between $40 and $150 to find out. Now slow cookers come in a lot of sizes. We found the best is six to seven quarts because that's going to give you enough room to make any full size recipe. From previous testings, we also knew that an oval shape is better than a round one because it's more versatile, especially when you're cooking a larger roast. And we wanted a glass lid because you don't want to have to open the pot to check progress or you're going to lose that gentle, moist heat that's cooking your food. Now you can choose a manual model with a simple knob that you have to turn for high, low, keep warm or off. Or you can pick a digital programmable model and that one cooks for whatever time frame you set and then automatically powers down to keep warm mode until you're ready to eat. One of our eight models was manual and it was the least expensive of the lineup. The other seven were digital programmable for truly hands-off cooking. Now naturally, we tested our lineup on the most classic task of a slow cooker, turning tough meat tender. We made batches of pot roast with vegetables, but people use slow cookers for much more than just braises and stews these days. So we decided to throw in a few other challenges. We chose recipes with a range of cooking times that use both low and high temperature settings. And we cooked boneless, skinless chicken breasts in a creamy sauce that you can make on the low setting in just about an hour. And we slow roasted a whole bone-in breast of turkey with a cherry glaze. We even made tender, medium-rare beef roast with a warm potato salad and a few of the finalists. Now our winning slow cooker has to make excellent food every time, but some of these cooked very unevenly. So for example, chicken breasts near the outside of the pot were overcooking and getting tough, while the middle ones still weren't done. And we saw that in pot roast too. Some areas of the meat were still chewy and rubbery, while other zones were nice and fall apart tender. We noticed that some pots just seemed to just boil the food, while in others it was really gently braising into juicy tenderness. We wanted to know what was going on, so we worked with a mechanical engineer from MIT to take apart a whole set of our slow cookers and look under the hood. Plus, we wired a set of the pots up to a thermocouple and tracked their temperatures when they were filled with water for six hours on high and 12 hours on low. And here's what we learned. Most slow cookers are pretty basic. They're big covered pots sitting in a hollow outer housing. Now inside that housing is usually a long skinny heating element that wraps around the lower middle of the pot like a belt. The belt itself is wrapped with wires, which are just like those red hot wires inside your toaster. When the pot is on, the wire heats up. And from inside the housing, it gently warms the crock, which cooks your food slowly. Now most of these use big, thick, heavy ceramic crocks because ceramic accumulates heat slowly, holds a lot of heat, and then radiates it gently. But then there's another style with a very thin, lightweight metal crock, which heats and cools down faster. These had heating elements underneath them, like they were sitting on an enclosed electric hot plate. This style has the added feature of letting you brown food in the pot before slow cooking, instead of using a separate skillet. And while this was a nice idea, honestly, it was very slow, because the heat is fairly wimpy, and the high sides of the crock trap steam, so the foods really struggled to brown. Bottom line, when we compared our cooking results, temperature tests, and what we learned from looking under the hood, we realized that our top two pots both had a little more sophisticated temperature sensors. And that meant instead of the usual slow cooker that just keeps heating up till it boils, they sense the temperature and hold it down for juicy, tender food every time. But great cooking is only half the battle. Now, much more than almost any other piece of kitchen equipment, slow cookers are about convenience because the whole point is to be quick and easy. You want to set them up and walk away. So if a particular model is too complicated, we are not interested. So we asked a variety of testers to walk up to each slow cooker, add water, and set it to cook for a specific time and temperature, and then turn it off and pour the water out of the crock. Now that was easier said than done, because some of these had so many buttons with such confusing layouts that our testers couldn't figure out how to set them. And they didn't know whether they were going or not. We even had a so-called smart cooker that ran on a phone app. It was a great idea, but really bad execution. Most of our testers were just puzzled and frustrated by it. Another one only lets you set even numbered cooking times, like two, four, six, eight hours, even though tons of recipes call for odd numbers like five, seven, or nine hours. One model stood out. The KitchenAid six quart slow cooker with solid glass lid, it cost $99. Its controls were unambiguous. Every button clicked satisfyingly and lit up when you pressed it, and within a few seconds, the clock began counting down so you knew it was running. Everyone loved it. 
plus its protruding handles that never got too hot to grab, and it gave us a nice secure grip, unlike some of these other cookers. Now, best of all, the KitchenAid also consistently produced excellent food in every test. It has a temperature sensor that kept food gently cooking, not boiling to death. And it has an unusual addition of extra insulation inside the housing that helped it cook more evenly, without hot spots, and more efficiently, using less power than the other cookers. It's our favorite slow cooker, and will be yours too.